and uh, welcome to Beaver Bushcraft and Leather. Today we're going to um, be doing the pioneering pouch which is uh, designed to house the Hudson Bay tinderbox. Um, now the pouch you see is uh, made from really nice leather and this is a make it yourself kit so when it's made you can just pop in the Hudson Bay and then you can put tinder or flint or whatever you want into this side and then when you've finished using it you simply wrap that round poke it through and it's all nice and secure okay so this is what we'll be making and this is the kit that you'll be getting when it's uh, when it's ordered so what we have are the basic plans of the inside, the outside, this is the tab here and this spiral will be the, the lace. Okay, We've got loads and loads of spare um, sinew but we can also have with that uh, this dark 1.7mm thread. Both look really good, both are really really strong and last will last forever. So the first thing we want to do is get our correct sized uh, hole punch for these little holes at the side. So the best thing to do is keep it as whole as you can like this and simply start punching.
Okay, now we'll look at the tab, which is this thing. It's a bit thicker, so uh, you need a sharp knife for it. Make sure it's good and sharp. Uh, we'll get that size for the holes. Put the holes out. Good. Now, cutting them out, cutting it out. Good. It's a good idea to just keep your blade nice and sharp. And you see in a lot of my videos, you'll just see me sharpening all the time. Won't take long. Now, there's several ways of cutting a good thick piece of leather out of this. You can try it all in one go, which is actually quite difficult unless your blade is really, really sharp. A good piece of advice would be to use a ruler and that way you're always guaranteed to get something square. So if you just cut the whole thing off and take two or three little passes, okay, that's this is one way to do it. And then you worry about the corners when it's all cut out. Now if you're doing it freehand, of course, you can just uh, use the upper part of the blade up here and keep keep the tip in and try and move the leather as much as you can around the blade and so you're not really sliding the blade at all until you get to a straight line like that but you've got to have a good sharp blade for this and apply quite a lot of pressure so you've got to be careful about your fingers as well because if it does slip of course, uh, your fingers will fall off. Uh, another way to do it is to actually cut it in straight lines, just following the circle around in straight lines. It's a perfectly leg legitimate way to do it. And if the leather is really hard, because it's got something like a flesh filler in it, that's exactly what I'll do. The other way is to actually nibble your way around so you're just quite literally nibbling through it like that that also gives a fairly clean edge you see when you do it in straight lines it can be a bit messy um, so you might have to clean it up afterwards but generally speaking it's a good way of doing it okay so now you've got your tab cut out so the next thing we do again is to bevel the edges it's a slightly bigger beveler. This is a an old trusted beveler that I used for many many years. This gives a nice round edge on it. And then do the other side. Now for those who know my work, you'll often see that I put my logo in the middle so you could put your initials there or something like that and uh, that will stand out quite nicely when it's done. Okay, so that's the tab. Six millimeter spiral thonging that we'll be using for the outside edge, okay? And we cut it in a spiral because actually it's a nice piece of leather and we can keep control of it then for this you've got to be really careful if it starts losing if you start missing the line a lot it will start to look a little bit scruffy so if you take as much time as you need to do a really good job again keep your blade nice and sharp and Make sure it's clean 
and then quite literally just follow the line round basically now what I tend to do is this is a kind of like the nibbling I was doing on the tab but I'm actually going about uh, half an inch in front of the cut I've already done actually it's, it, you can get quite a lot because you can actually locate the knife and you're only doing cuts in like half half inch or um, 15 mil increments so actually it's quite a good way of doing this when you build up confidence of course you could do it longer um, increments or just do it as one continuous cut round now what you can start doing is just removing the waste that just gets in the way otherwise okay. Now again, if you're pulling on the leather, you can keep the blade relatively state still and, and then sort of just ease the leather into the blade. Okay. Or we can start from the inside and work our way outwards. We'll do a bit of both if you get bored. Okay, now, once you've got your lace, what you're going to notice is that it is a bit kind of curly, okay? So, what we really need to do with the lace to kind of sort this, this sort of eye out is to get it nice and wet. So, if you just roll it in your hands and cover it with water, okay? Or just put it in under the tap for a couple of minutes. You no, know? all you do do is got to get it saturated. It's not going to do it any harm. In fact, okay. And then what we do is just gently kind of pull it. So we're sort of stretching, stretching it straight. You might say. Just let hang that up to dry. It'll take a few hours to dry, but matter we'll be getting on with the rest of it. So as you can see, it's pretty straight now, and that will just get better as time goes on. Now, you leave the tab on, this bit here, because if you're going to dye it, actually it's a really good idea just to hold that, dip it in your dye, or put your um, dauber on with your dye, and then just run it through and you've got something to hold on to. Okay, now this is the artificial sinew option. If you want the uh, 1.72 mil tiger thread, uh, that's the difference between the two. Both are incredibly strong. Don't, the leather will go long before the stitching ever does. And the leather will last forever. Now, there's actually two ways that we can put this together. We can put it together as one thread just going all the way around it 
and then when we come to the first stitch again we simply go backwards around it now that actually is quite difficult when your thread is this long okay because actually we've given a lot of thread here far too much actually but just in case mistakes are made you can see if we were trying to pull this amount of thread through um, each stitch hole that's quite a lot of thread pulling so what you can do is use the second needle and simply put that on the other end and then we'll sort of do a running stitch with two needles or cross running stitch you might say pinch it there poke the needle through between the two fingers and then pull it down and then you can do it again if you only do it once this is the problem with this this uh, sinew it's because it's very loosely braided if you only do it once it can unbraid itself and then it will the needle can actually you pull the needle out so if you do it twice that's very unlikely to happen so just put it through again okay and then you've got uh, it doubly secured so what we do is we need to know where the middle is so put your two needles together and then pull pull the thread okay so that's the middle that's the two ends that's the middle and that's the two ends and that's the thread okay right so put it together make sure that the holes are lined up and I tend to start on the inside so I know where I'm going and also what I tend to do I'll be finishing both threads from that hole there which is I mean it doesn't matter which hole it is but generally speaking, I always start there so what I want to do is start a few holes upwards okay and then I will then just bury the thread in between the two pieces of leather so pulling it through keeping it all even until you have the, th the thread evenly between the two pieces of leather now you only need to have one of the threads for this you can do it both at the same time it's it's um it's a little bit more awkward to do in my opinion but you'll see an awful lot of other people on YouTube and things actually doing it one thread at a time generally I do it so the alternate threads at a time generally I just do it one thread at a time and we're going to do a cross stitch on this so pinch the unused thread so that you can actually pull this reasonably tight don't overly pull it tight or you'll start to buckle the leather at this point and simply roll it round and go through the next series of holes and basically we're just going to go all the way around the leather like that so I'm making sure that when you do this that the edges of the leather align with each other and that the um, the thread is crossing over at an even distance apart okay so we'll just keep going with this the other way to do this of course is to get some clips like this and then just clip them along the edge and it actually keeps it closed but it can catch the thread and it can loop it round it which gets a little bit annoying at times like that so you'd pull that and then it would catch like that and that's really a little frustrating so I don't tend to use those but you can do if you need to so if you were using two 
the, both of these at the same time obviously you'd have to keep dropping one picking the other up dropping one, that one and picking the other up this is why I tend to just do one thread and concentrate on that one and then worry about the second crossover thread later on so going round a corner just make sure that these spacings will be very slightly further apart in our appearance so just just make sure that they're even now that's beginning to twist up so what I tend to do is lay it flat like that and just simply run my fingers along the length of the thread and generally it kind of un winds it, untwists it you might say. Now, as you see we're coming to the last one so what we need to do is we need to go through the back of the last one and come up through the middle now the little tip here if we pull this second thread if we pull this second thread fairly tight and pinch it okay what we can do is lock the two threads together so what I can do is come in between this thread and puncture it like that. Okay, and as I've punctured it, and then I go between the two. Now, you don't have to do this, but what it does is it kind of adds a new a lock to it, which will mean that it could not come undone easily. And simply pull the thread through and pull it tight. Now, so we've got one thread in the middle. So we take that one thread and we simply go between the two pieces of leather and between the threads. Okay, so we'll come out of that hole and if it's too long, simply come up the middle, pull the thread through, okay, pull it tight and then anything that's showing just poke it down and then go back between the two layers and come out in that hole again if we puncture between the thread that's already there it just adds another layer of security and then you pull that make sure that this is poked down and then you pull it fairly tight now what we can do is just snip that off snip it off about that long so later on we can just pull it tight and as you can see there's a lot of thread left over in case you make a mistake now we come to the second one and the second one we're just going to repeat almost the same process now you can't go that way because if you do all you're doing is laying threads that will be parallel to each other so we want to go in the same direction that we went in the first one but it will be the opposite you might say um, over the top instead of underneath and pull that tight now what you need to do is just adjust that thread so it actually crosses over right where the two layers of leather are okay so you can lay it over pinch it and then go through the hole with the needle and pull it fairly tight again roll over pinch it roll over that way we'll get a nice consistent th stitch Coming to the last 
but one this is the last stitch now so what we need to do is we go over the thread as usual and now instead of going all the way through again what we want to do is come up the middle now one of the best ways to do this I found is to guide a hole from the center here so that as we go through what we're, what we're aiming to do is come up to the middle come up the middle like that okay so come through and it can be a bit stiff if it is too stiff just use a pair of pliers on it and now we've come up the middle like that and we've got the thread in between the two so again go down and then because it's a little tighter we might have to come through a thread or so a hole before this happens so it can be quite stiff or we come up the middle like that now if you can't pinch it through what we do is use a pair of pliers now if you're using pliers never pull the needle out like that because what you'll do is you'll add a bend a twist in it and you'll snap snap the needle at the eye so always pull it out along its central axis like that so that way it will always remain a good needle so pull that through pull it quite tight and as you can see it's not gone all the way between the two pieces of leather so just poke it down with the needle like that okay and then pinch the leather to to hide it I want to come out of the same hole that we came out with the first thread okay so we go down the middle and then just simply come through now again this can be a bit difficult and if you do go through the thread like I've just done there that's all well and good it just helps to lock it into sp uh, into place and then pull it along its axis to pull it through as you can see any thread that's poking that that's still showing okay just push it into the leather okay and then pinch the leather around it so now we've got both threads coming out of the same hole so it's at this point you want to make sure that the first one's fairly tight and the second one's tight and then cut it off about that which is about five millimeters from the edge of the leather now fold the leather round and then use a lighter just to heat those threads up and melt them so I don't melt it and then melt that one and this will just add a like a little mushroom top over it and you can squish this down and it just locks it in and that will never come out so you've now locked the thread in place and there's only one place that can be seen so you can't see it from the outside basically that is the pouch that is finished so if we take the Hudson Bay as an example from the other one we can see that it's a beautiful fit now you can have it this way so that the the lens is this way up or this way generally if it's this way it adds a bit of shape to the outside of the pouch and makes the pouch when it's closed look a little bit more interesting as it molds itself around it that's generally what I do when I send them out so little nosy nuts yeah what's going on here yeah right so threading the what we're going to do is get both ends together so we can confine the middle of it okay and then poke it through the hole here and that one there like that it's easy peasy really isn't it now we get the ends together 
hold it tight. Now, you see we've got a little kink in here, so what we do is simply unkink it, uh, untwist it there, and then pull it tight. So that's nice and secure. Line the two threads up, make sure that they're parallel, and then keep that, and then we will want it to go like that. So you take one thread, Go underneath, over and under. Hmm. Like that. Now, what we need to do is just pull that and then get it in the right spot, which will be sort of there. And then we can just pinch that and then pull this thong through to, to even it up like that. And it doesn't matter what you do Thonging will always twist on you. It's just something it does because it knows it annoys me, so it keeps doing it. So now put the two faces or two insides together and simply tie a neat knot like this. Poke it through. Neaten it all up like that. Okay, and then that will simply pop in through like that to keep it in place, and it will keep it in place because the knot will stop it pulling through. Comment below, and we'll try and answer any questions we can. And please subscribe. Uh, we're trying to build this channel and uh, the more people subscribe, the more enthusiastic I will be and make a lot more videos. So thank you very much. the right over the left and come underneath like that okay like that and then take the one you didn't use and come underneath the whole thing and come over the top okay and lay it parallel so that now take the original one and then come through a little loop here that you've made previously like that and then neaten it all up and you've got a beautiful little square knot that looks lovely lovely like that so that's another way to do it if you know any other fancy knots then leave a comment and uh, I'll watch what you making them <laughs>